started. Uh, we're recording this, everyone. So um, if anybody needs anything, or, or at the end of this, we'll do a Q&A, but there's also going to be a recording. So we can send that out. It's also on Facebook Live. So everybody will get the opportunity to, uh, to ask questions, to review this. Uh, and again, thank you, everyone, for joining today on this Monday in September. Um, my name is Tim Howard or Timothy Howard, and uh, I'm, um, the, I work in innovation with Vish, but also on the onboarding team. Um, and then Josh, you can Josh is the CEO. Uh, and so if you want to introduce yourself to Josh. Good morning, for those who know me, I'm Josh. I'm Tim's brother and CEO of the company. And uh, previous background in research, so a lot of the pricing strategy and stuff that Tim and I have worked together. Um, I, I lead the data side and Tim really works on the implementation side of making sure that the technology, uh, you know, works in the, in the um, salon setting. Yeah. And um, my background is in hair for those of you who don't know me. So been in the industry for many years and we're happy to share some of the things that we've been able to find in the industry and problems that we've been able to solve, uh, specifically around, um, product allowances and how we can change your service menu so that your salon is more profitable with the hair color services. So in today's session, just to kind of give an overview, um, what we're gonna to cover today are pricing methods. So different methods of pricing and how product allowances work with each. Pricing for profits, ex understanding exactly how charging for additional product will change your business and how to set thresholds. So we can look at each individual service that you're doing at the color bar, and then talk about the thresholds that are set and how they're set so that you can ensure profitability uh, is balanced and equalized amongst all services. So the three common pricing structures used in a salon. So this is a poll that we're gonna do now. Um, and we wanna know which one that you use. So we have all inclusive pricing. So for those of you who aren't familiar, it's well, everybody should be because this is pretty much the most commonly uh, a pro commonly used approach in the industry where you have a balayage, you have a new growth, and whatever product is used is included in the price. Separating parts and labor. Um, so that's when you've got just the labor portion and then the cost of the product is cost, usually plus markup is added to the bill. And then pro uh, pricing with product allowances. So this again references the thresholds I was just speaking of. So when you're looking at a balayage, you know, we want to include a couple scoops of bleach with that plus developer that's built in uh, into the price and into the, the pricing structure. So if everybody wants to take the time to just kind of fill out this poll so we can see where everybody is on the call, greatly appreciate it. I want to just wait for those poll results to come in. Um, and we can talk about, you know, we'll, we'll get into this a little bit more and get into more in depth with the pricing poll and how they work, or sorry, pricing structure and how it works and how with Vish, we can kind of tailor it so it fits into your business model. Um, so whether you want to do separating parts and labor or uh, pricing with product allowances. Yeah, if you look at like traditionally the industry operates in kind of all inclusive pricing is quite rare. Pricing with product allowances is by far the most common, but common in theory, but in practice, all inclusive pricing ends up happening the most where people have extra bold charges, they have add on color charges, but a lot of those don't get, don't get pushed to the front desk. The front desk isn't notified. So, you know, all inclusive pricing where no matter what they use, you're trying charging the client at the front desk seems to be the most popular. Okay, so it looks like we have the poll results back. All right, so all-inclusive pricing, we have 25% of the group that are doing that right now. Nobody is doing separating parts and labor. And pricing with product allowances, 75% are doing that. So uh, clearly, um, and I would just like to follow that up. So hopefully we can get a little bit into the answers a little bit more with the group. Um, because I'd like to know how many people in the group uh, are VISH users versus uh, people who've just got their own structure in place. So, so we can understand that 75% a little bit more. Okay, so we can move on to the next slide, please. All right, Josh. Yeah, so I'll take it from there. Um, 
So increasing revenue, um, all the all of this, you know, separating parts and labor can increase revenue, but specifically um, the benefits of product allowances can really increase revenue. But one of the key components is maintaining profitability. Different guests have different needs. Uh, we've seen this exacerbated with, with COVID where people are stretching their business from six every six weeks to every 12 weeks. And we see it um, even with salons that just aren't using our technology is that your senior stylist and or if you're an owner behind the chair that you're using the budgeted amount so you're using the 40 grams of color for a new growth or 30 grams of color for a toner but we can see without setting these product allowance and having a system in place then that's really cutting into your profitability so client hits your chair and you're using twice the amount of color you know right away that starts eating away um, at the amount of profit that you can make in that particular service but if you set the product allowance um, you know, his point here, it's fair pricing. So if someone needs more color, they get charged more. If someone doesn't need more color, they, they don't get charged more. It also um, encourages clients to come back on a regular cadence. So they're not paying um, for more money uh, each time they go get their hair done. And it really just, it allows your salon owners and management to budget for the amount of color they're purchasing will generate a certain amount of revenue to pay, you know, your other fixed costs. And if someone uses more, it's a positive uh, impact because that will actually increase the amount of revenue ma you make per ticket. And therefore it will increase your profitability. Um, one thing that Tim's identified with a lot of clients is previous to Vish, um, or, you know, you could do a lot of this stuff manually is when the manufacturers put out a pricing increase. Some do it once a year, some do it twice a year. Um, that can really cut into your profitability. And every time they do that, most salons aren't making the adjustment to their, to their service menu. They're not increasing the pricing. So until that time, that just cuts away at their profit margin. Whereas we work closely with the manufacturers and the salons. So when these pricing updates come out, we can figure your system prior to these, down you know, the product hitting your shelf or these pricing in, increase happening. So then that will also strengthen your margin um, if, we, if we layer it in the back end. Yeah, and I'll just kind of just add to that, Josh, is that it's just been difficult before to do because if a manufacturer increases their price by five or seven percent as it custom as they usually do uh, in that but in that ballpark, to to for your you to pass off that cost to your customers, you'd have to go into your website, you'd have to change your service menu items. There's a lot of you know printing that you would need to do possibly if you still do printed menus. Um, there's just a lot of things that need to get done. Whereas with Vish, what we end up doing, what we do is we do it on the back end. So there's nothing, no changes because your base cost to your customer doesn't change. So if your parts and labor, it just gets put on the parts. Uh, if you've got uh, product allowances, it just means that there'll be that five to seven or, or whatever the increase is back to the customer without you having to change anything that's visible to the customer. And then one more thing about product allowances is very important is that it adds consistency, um, you know, don't want to get too much in the weeds with parts and labor because you know some salons use that effectively. But by having the product allowances, you're maintaining price consistency. So a new growth application, if they don't over mix and the normal use case, they should not be over mixing. They should stay within budget. So it's $60 or $80. And that is the same thing every time that that customer comes in for, um, to, comes in for a service. Whereas if you do product, if you do parts and labor, it might be 62, it might be 64, it might be 66. That number is going to bounce around, which does create some uncertainty for your clients. Um, sorry, and then Braxton Banks had just asked a question, which I, I know we're not doing the Q&A net, but it's on this topic. So um, Braxton asks, as far as price increases, what do you suggest with distributors? In my area, sometimes they will have an increase, even if the manufacturer does same thing. It doesn't really matter where the, the price increase is coming from. Um, it's just that we have that ability. As soon as you, you let, if, as soon as you've seen a price increase or you know that it's coming, you would let your CS rep know. We would uh, change it on the back end so that your wholesale cost is reflected. And then that way we would do the standard markup on the new wholesale cost as well. So we can fix it no matter if it comes to the manufacturer or distributor. Or if you're going out manually, you know, running to a, a local distributor and picking up products, you know, it can be changed in your system as well. Uh, 
And Sabrina, I think we'll, we're ready for the next. Okay, so understanding extra product charges. Um, by setting thresholds for product use, you can automatically trigger extra product charges anytime those thresholds are exceeded. So if you can see here when we've got the, uh, the service menu. So what you're looking at right now, for those who aren't familiar, is this is the Vish Front Desk app. Um, so it's in two places. You can see on your dashboard using Vish, but also as a widget that sits on your desktop for your front desk computer. And what the idea is, um, it's minimized, so it actually just sits a, a few inches long, very narrow, and it is movable anywhere on your screen. So it acts as a digital ticket or a digital traveler, which constantly gets updated as your team are mixing color. So what you're seeing here is a color glaze, color service with a color service was done and they exceeded the threshold. And this example, they use ounces. The salon uh, was allowing two ounces of color to be used, which we converted to a dollar amount. But you can see here that there's a $5.35 charge that's been added to the bill because they use 1.3 more ounces based on the cost of the product and the markup. This is what it's been calculated to. So, and then the same thing happened with the root touch-up where there was extra product used. And again, it's really important to think about extra product just as what it is. It's extra product. It's not extra time. So for me to apply an extra 10 or 15, 20 grams of color, an ounce of color in this case, it doesn't increase or take away from, from my book. I'm just there able to do it as I'm going. And as we know, not all customers require the same amount of color. Therefore, not all prices should be the same. So what this is able to do is just balance it. And Julia most likely either had thicker, coarser hair, or she was in maybe after a 12-week visit instead of her normal six-week visit, which is why I should be an extra $9. So it, unless it's time-based, it's not necessary. And we don't recommend that you uh, charge commission uh, or, or give commission on these services because, again, it's just inventory. There's no time applied for it. I think this is great so, because for the customer, it also shows transparency as well. Go ahead, Josh. Sorry. Yeah. I think a couple of things with product charges that really help salons strengthen their bottom line is if someone's mixing a highlighting service or a new growth application and the stylist, for whatever reason, decides that they don't want to charge for a toner, but they do need to mix it as an additional bowl. In an ideal world, this, you, you charge the $35 to $50 for the toner, and that has a product allowance built into it, but, but we know that's not the case. So at least with our system, if I book a highlighting service and someone adds a, a toner to my ticket or a toner, uh, just an extra bowl of color, then that will actually strengthen. So there would be a 100% markup on the color, and rather than it eating into the profit, it's actually going to add on to additional margin. And with, to Tim's comment that we typically don't, recommend that you pay commission on this. Of course, you can always pay commission on this. But what we found is that this ends up being, you know, and about a couple thousand to, you know, upwards of $10,000 per month, if you're a large salon with like 20 plus chairs, that this money is best spent, you know, when it goes back into the salon, we see salon owners, you know, contributing to 401k or contributing to health benefits, because Per stylist, it's not a massive amount of money that they're going to notice in commission, but it is a significant amount of money that's used in the salon that can be spent on you know, bonuses, 401ks, like I said, a healthcare, lots of different things that salon owners have been able to do with these product charges. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to figure move on to the next slide. Uh, so what you're seeing here is this is actually how we set it up in the system. Um, you know, we you know, were always making things easier, manage us to set up the, the product allowances. Tim, you were um, very choppy there. I'm not we, sure if it was mine. Do you just want to repeat yourself? I think you're going to cut out. Sure. Sure. Yeah, my apologies. So. Recommended in grams, whether the salon you already have your thresholds or the amount of color that you allow for a service, we then convert that into a dollar amount. 
Uh, and that's where you're seeing that the product allowance here is $10.60 for a new growth application. The reason why we do it in dollars and not grams is because, or in ounces, is because not all products cost the same. So if we just said, look, you're allowed 40 grams of, of color to do the service, well, now it's confusing to the customer, sorry, it's confusing to the hairdresser, but also it doesn't cover your cost. If you use one color versus another, let's look at direct dyes versus high lift color versus semi-permanent, we know that they all cost different. And what are, we're, our goal at Vish is to maintain and to sustain your profitability amongst all services. Uh, is there anything you wanna to add to that, Josh? Uh, I hope that you weren't as choppy for everybody else as you were on my end. Um, I definitely am. So maybe you should make sure you- So you the high level is that, points. you know, a lot of people in this industry, a lot of like a lot of sort of language around how much product you use is always on grams or um, you know how much product you're allowed in the weights so of grams or ounces. We speak in dollar figures simply because you know, if you're if you're you're talking about margin here, so you're allowing five dollars per application, or ten dollars in this case. That's the marked up amount, the retail amount in hair color. Um, and then that you know, someone's using a high lift product, or they're using a more expensive product, or in the Veda world, they're using more pure tones. That if someone's using more expensive products than the guest, that's okay. But you should be able to strengthen your margin. Uh, right. Especially. So I've got Tony here. Has got an uh, uh, sorry. Braxton has another question. What is the easiest way to translate this for stylists? So that's a great question. Um, and it, it just, so here are basically a couple of analogies that we like to use. Um, one of them is, you know, is understanding that not all things cost the same, that there's a baseline cost that are, that are included in the service. So I usually explain it to hairdressers by ordering a drink if they, or they go into a restaurant for a glass of wine and the house wine if for four ounces is six or eight dollars, say, but they don't want that one. They want a slightly more expensive wine. And that's exactly what's happening when you've got, you know, a client comes in and wants a certain type of look and needs a high lift color. We explain those costs that way. But basically what it is, is if you're doing like a balayage service or you're doing a new growth, we know, and Josh can talk about the data on this, is that it's achievable to do these services that, with this much product. So this is what's included in the service. And then when you, and which usually will allow for the average head of hair coming in on a frequency of every four to six weeks. If you extend past that, or your hair has specific needs, like it's more tech, it's drier, more porous, extra product is needed, that's where this comes in. But Josh, maybe if you want to talk about, you know, where salons, come in with us versus, you know, per application to where they end up being um, and what's achievable? Yeah. So, you know, when we first go in salons, there's a lot of inconsistencies of how much product is being used per service. And usually within the salon, there's always several stylists that are using a reasonable amount of color. Uh, typical new growth application, depending on the color line you use, Ranges anywhere from six to nine dollars for application. You know, we can get you under three dollars. But I mean, this is not new language for the stylist. Um, when we, we most service menus have a hair color application, then you have short, medium, long. It's the exact same way that you would explain it um, based on how they would have explained it before. What we try to communicate with our salon owners and communicate with the stylists is that don't worry about it. Vish is actually going to push this information to the front desk and the guest is going to have is the guest is going to pay the appropriate amount. Most of the times with the guest, it's a non-starter because you're not talking about massive charges. Say it's an additional six dollar charge because your guest is not coming back as frequently. And if they ask, well, why is my ticket more expensive? The front desk is armed with the information and that's who we train how to use this system and how to explain this is you, we, you know, normally use 40 grams of color for a new growth application. We use 65 grams and, you know, we have this hair color management software to ensure that you're only charged for what was used. And that, you know, has been very successful. Salon owners have a very easy time explaining that and the guests, it makes perfect sense. Sorry, I'm having internet connection issues, Josh. So let me know if it goes choppy. There's a, a bit of a storm happening here today. 
One of the biggest things that I, I guess we hear a lot of feedback from stylists. Oh, perfect. I guess. Thanks. Thanks. Fine. Sabrina. Great. So Tim's gone completely choppy. So we'll open up if there's any more uh, questions. I'm um, more than happy to answer them. What um, um, one of the biggest things that we try to communicate with our salon owners is that and staff and stylists is that we're not reinventing the wheel here. We're not trying to go in and change your culture. We're trying to understand your pricing structure and make sure that it happens 100 percent of the time. So, you know, you know how to manage your staff, you know how to manage your clients this is just a system that takes all of your rules and automates it for you uh, and approves on it. And then if there's anything that you guys don't understand how to do or looking for some more help, then, you know, we do a lot of consulting. We have 30 days, 60 day and 90 day reviews, including in your software package. And even beyond that, if you need extra help to make sure that you understand the data that's coming in and understand what other salons are doing in, in a similar scenario and then improving on your business model. Yeah, and hopefully you can hear me. Um, hopefully it's not too choppy, Josh, is it? I just leave my camera off, which seems to improve it a little bit. Your voice is much better now. Um, there okay. was one okay, open question. Um, when we are now integrated with Mevo. Um, I believe that it is going to go on the partner store if it's not up there already, but we'll be making an announcement, but we are currently live with salons integrated. So it's been, um, and just to give you an idea of the integration, how it works now, the, P the appointments get pushed to the tablet so the stylists don't need to book for the day. And then that information then gets pushed back so the formula notes will sit in, in Mevo. For any existing BISH users, please communicate with customer support that you would like to get this integration hooked up. Um, and what we will need is a little bit of patience so we need to migrate your formulas, but um, you know, we're hoping to get all of these done. Any existing Bish Mevo customers will we'll hopefully get you done in October. Um, any new customers, we can get you hooked up right away. Yeah, and just to be clear, Josh, Dawn is with us. She's an existing customer, so she would fall into that data migration category. So is Braxton. So we're that's no yeah. problem. We'll just just send a request in, and we'll um, at support at getfish.com and we'll make sure that can sort it out for you. <laughs> yes, finally. Um, yeah, and just to be clear, that for those of you who, you know, the, the integration is really uh, efficient, really helps salons kind of streamline. Um, so that, uh, if you want more information about integrations and how they work, please reach out to us as well. And if you know so salons, anybody here is on the call and would like to readdress their product allowances, um, again, you know, we're able to get salons down to, in the most part, under $4 per application or around $4 per application. So if you've been with Vish for quite a while and you're, you know, we haven't changed your product allowances or changed your markup in a while, feel free to book a meeting with us so that we can make that happen um, so that you're able to generate more revenue from your product charges. Yeah, and we will add you pistachio for sure. We'll add you to that integration list. Um, does anybody have any other questions? We're happy to answer them. No? Oh, here we go. So we just got a Another few more people. So that's great. Everybody who wants to get added, you can just put it here. Um, and yeah, we can do that. But please, like Josh said, you can email us at support at getfish.com. Um, and we can, you know, we can work with you one-on-one -on -one to get that, that complete, to get that worked on. So again, you know, really think about your product. If you're not doing product allowances, or if you haven't had a system that's in place, know that a lot of the bold charges that you're currently doing to kind of make up for this, in, in my experience and Josh's experience and all the hundreds and hundreds of salons that we interact with, um, this is not an effective way to manage when extra product is used. Um, I like the, you know, meeting with salons all the time, most recently came across a salon that had, uh, you know, had their own system in place, didn't want to adopt ours right from the beginning. The difference between what they collected in the months 
they were collecting about $1,500 a month in product charges. And in the first 30 days of using Vish, we captured $8,500 in product charges that should have been captured. So the salon had been doing this for quite a while and felt confident that all their team were um, you know, charging for the extra product, but in fact, it was nowhere near it. So the honor, honor method is not always, you know, the, the hairdressers are being malicious. It's just sometimes we forget or we give it away because, you know, because we can really. So, you know, by, by implementing product charges and doing it properly and monitoring it, there's a huge revenue stream for salons that especially now is needed. So I think we're done with questions, you know, as per usual, always, I guess, Tim and I are both available. If anybody has any questions, um, please send the integration request in at support at getfish.com. And if you're not, if you do not have fish front desk, um, if you haven't tweaked it in quite some time, um, you should reach out as well. So we can do a data review. Even if you're past the 90 days, we'll do a data review and make sure that the product allowance are set. Because what we typically see is your product cost should continually come down until you get to like, you know, $4 per application. So it's important that we, you know, we looked at, you know, either decrease your product allowance or increase the margin on the other side so you can further increase your profitability. And sorry, my internet connection is so poor today, everyone. Um, thank you very much for attending. And if anybody needs anything, again, like Josh said, we are here to help. Thank you. Oh, how do we figure the product allowance number? Can I share a screen on this? One second. Yeah, one second. I will show you this. So an easy way um, is just how much product you want to allow. And if you go to your web app, so if you go to your web app, you'll be able to see how much color you're using um, per service and it will have a grand. So this includes developer as well. So this will give you an idea and you want to take this number and multiply it by two. So it really depends on what your product allowance, what you would like it to be. Um, you know, for a gloss add-on, typically we you know, would see 60 grams, including developer or 80. That's a very efficient, the standard should be 80 grams. So we would have it set at, you know, approximately $5 multiplied by two would give you a $10 product allowance to, you know, take into account for the, um, the markup. And that's what goes under your product allowance. Tim, I do believe you have some documentation on this and um, we could share that with any individual that wants to see it. And then we can also take some time and, and meet with you as well. Perfect. Okay, everybody. Thank you. We look forward to having another one of these very soon and uh, have a lovely week. Bye-bye.